Hummingbird Resources is in the process of building a gold production company which is currently in development at Yanfalila in Mali where it also has exploration interests. The company also has the Dugby Gold Project in Liberia. Dan Betts is chief executive and he joins us now. Dan, welcome. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, you and I have known each other six or seven years and I remember when you, we first spoke about this project it was little more than, I don't even think it was a hole in the ground, was it? You've come a long way. Well, it wasn't even this project. When we first right. met, we, right. were, well. we, were, um, <laughs> we were exploring for gold in Liberia was right. how the company started and, and when we first met we just IPO'd the company um, and then we continued exploring and as, as we all know the market got extremely difficult at that time and we had a very big project that was very difficult to fund so we found a higher grade smaller project that we did a transaction with a major we bought that project out of Goldfields and then we spent the last two years building the team and building that project and we're now on the verge of imminent gold production. Yeah, that's coming what, fourth quarter? Well we are now in the fourth quarter, so you're promising your first gold pour this quarter? And we're still promising our first gold by the end of this year, yeah. yeah. So it is, it is imminent. And what's the uh, projection in terms of production for next year? So in our first full year of production we'll do 132,000 ounces of gold and we'll do that at an estimated all-in cost of around $700 an ounce. So that's a fair markup on where you are. What about uh, what you're doing at the moment, where you are, Mali, the production, how difficult it is to get the stuff out of the ground? Is it going to be taxed by the local government? Quite often uh, it, these areas do throw up some challenges. Well, I mean, there's a lot of challenges, but I think you know we're 15 months into a 17-month build program and we're still on track and we're on budget. So I think you've got to give great credit to the Hummingbird team and all our guys on the ground because they've overcome most of those project pro problems. And the problems aren't significant, they're just a multitude of logistical issues is really, you know, that's the challenge. You're bolting together a huge number of things in a, in a far away place and everything comes engineered all over the world. I think we've had nearly 800 containers shipped from different places around the planet, all arriving at Yamfalila, all being bolted together, lots of different disciplines. Um, it's a complex job, but I'm, I'm pleased to say they're doing a, an amazing job. And the whole lot's paid for? You don't know anybody anything in terms of where you are now? Or? Well, we have some debt on the project, but we've drawn that debt, and I mean, the company's in a great shape financially. So before we committed to building the project, we, we raised $75 million of equity in the market, and then we also have taken a $60 million loan off an African bank called Chorus Bank, who have been very supportive lenders. Um, and at the moment, our cash balance in the bank is over $50 million, which is a very strong position to be in. Um, yeah, What's I'm your, happy with the, the way that's going. What are the finances looking like then for next year? Got this production, 130,000 ounces, so you say? It, it, well, I think the gold price has come back a bit in the last week, but at 1250 gold, which is below today's gold price, we'd have in excess of $75 million of free cash next year. Obviously, we need to start repaying our debt. Um, but you, you know you have a tapered tax holiday with the government of Mali. There'll be some royalties to pay, but it, in essence, you know the company's going to be in a completely different position to any position it's ever been in before, where we've been dependent on the market and raising equity to do our work. Mm -hmm. You know we'll, we'll be highly cash generative. I mean, we'll be trading at under two times next year's earnings. Yeah, I'll take, a look at the share price. I'll take a look at the share price in just a yeah. minute if I can. I would also want to ask very briefly about the deal you did last week um, and and what that brings uh, to the picture for investors? Well, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, I think we've had our head down building this project. It's been a huge challenge for a, a junior explorer to become a, um, a developer and then an operating mining company. So we've had our, had our head down focusing on that challenge. But I'm aware that as soon as we start producing, the market will say, oh, well, well done, guys, good job. But Jan Falila's, it's only got a seven-year mine life. It's relatively short. The reality is very different. We have lots of gold all around the area, but it will take time and money to convert those resources into reserves to put through the mine plan. What this deal does is we've done a deal with a, with a Canadian-listed company called African Gold Group, and they have a 2.2 million ounce gold deposit just up the road from us, well, uh, 75 kilometers up the road. So. Our theory and our team have been looking at their DFS and speaking to the guys at AGG and we believe that it's possible to um, concentrate the ore at site so you wouldn't need to move all that ore down to Yamfalila and then we could augment our throughput and it would extend the mine life and extend the ounces produced through the, um, through the Yamfalila plant. So it's a great deal for us, a great deal for Hummingbird shareholders because it shows a, a roadmap to greater production and a longer mine life. Great deal for African Gold Group because it shows they've got a roadmap to cash flow with us funding it as a, as a partner. So um, 
one of those rare opportunities in life, which is a win-win, mm. I think. Yeah. Okay. Before we get to the share price again, I want to talk about the gold project in Liberia yeah. and how far down the road you are with that. What's the position there? Well, the position in Liberia is, is to be honest, you just we don't have the bandwidth to do two projects at once. So, I mean, we've been progressing the um, the. Liberian project as far as we can, keeping the environmental uh, permits up to date, keeping the licenses up to date, keeping a low profile in country, but all our work's really been on Mali for the last 15 months. There's an election in Liberia in two months and you know, with Yamfalila coming on stream, having cash flow, we're very excited about the optionality that gives us to go back and re-engage re, re with that huge value that's lying in Liberia. I mean, we've got 4.2 million ounces of gold in Liberia at 1300 gold, the MPV is nearly $200 million. And I honestly think there's zero value for it on our share price. Right. Let's take a look at the share price yeah. here, if we can. Uh, in the context of what you said as well, this goes back uh, to 2010, when we were at something like around about 180 pence. Give me a heart with that girl. Yeah, yeah, I know. But we've got to look at it because I think this puts the whole thing into context, doesn't yeah. it? You talk about some $50 uh, million dollars on your balance sheet, which I think is about, what, th let's say 30, 30 million pounds. Mm. 120 million pound market cap, I think yep. you've got. And you're talking about free cash next year, something like about 70 or 80 million. Is dollars, right? yeah. Dollars. Yeah. Okay, right. There's a couple of current going on here but yep. the point is here we are at 35 and a half pence a share uh, down from 180 four or five years ago explain what's been going on so the market was a different place if you go back to the beginning of that graph we IPO'd hummingbird we only had um, you know we had under a million ounces of gold in in Liberia and um, we raised the money to explore and we were successful in exploring but there was a lot of excitement in the market and as you can see the market paid a different price at that time for exploration optionality as we found gold, the market's view on the expiration changed. I mean, it's not just Hummingbird, the whole market fell off a cliff. And we were faced with this weird position where we had found a huge discovery, which would have cost a huge amount of money to build, and a market cap that was crashing. So we, we would have probably gone bust in reality if we'd had to try and finance that mine that time. So that, that was what promoted us. And I think credit to Hummingbird for acting quickly and identifying an opportunity and being decisive, but that's what, um, that's what in, uh, made us uh, go for Yamfalila and uh, do that deal, and that's a smaller project that we could fund um, mm. and execute. And actually, really, in hindsight, a perfect size project for a junior to cut its teeth on. Yeah. So if you, if you zoom in on that graph to the last two years, it's a different story. I mean, as, as Liberia kind of, it became apparent that it was, um, going to be a challenge. I mean, Hummingbird looked like it was going to go bust. And then over the last two years, you can see actually we're up over 100%. Yeah. We financed it. The market is starting to believe that we will deliver on our promises in Yamfalila, and that will give us a whole world of optionality going forward. So what, is, what should the market cap be, bearing in mind? You've got this production <laughs> coming, you've got a seven-year mine life on the mine you've got, plus the deal you've done. Uh, we're talking 35 pence. Yeah, never ask a CEO that question. But I mean, um, the gold mining industry pays five to 20 times earnings. Yeah. You know, that's what it trades at globally. Yeah. So and we're trading at under two times earnings. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know, someone, someone out there will probably find a cheaper one, but to my knowledge, we're the cheapest yeah. producing gold company out there. And we're gonna be producing imminently. What keeps you up at night? There must be something. I sleep that... pretty well. <laughs> I mean, you just try your best and that's it. Okay, uh, the money next year getting in, um, what do shareholders get out of that? What are we going to do well, with the yeah, free cash flow? Yeah. Well, so we need to start repaying our debt from June next year. So of that free cash, I mean, as we'll look to pay down that debt and be responsible. Yeah. Um, there'll be a small amount spent on expiration to convert our resources to reserves. Um, but look, I'm open-minded. I'm not looking to just spend money for the sake of it. If, if we don't come up with an expiration program or a, an M&A target or something that is compelling and gives returns that are equitable to what we're getting from this project, then it's shareholders' money. I'm, yeah. you know, it's a discussion the board will have to have, yeah. but I, I'm very open-minded. Good luck for the first gold pour. Thanks very much. Look, look, forward, look forward to the news as it comes yeah. out. Dan, Cheers. thanks indeed for joining us. That's Dan Betts, he's Chief Executive of Hummingbird Resources, due with its first gold pour in Mali towards the end of this year.